On November 23, 1912, the Rouse Simmons, a 123-foot-long schooner loaded with thousands of Christmas trees, sank on its way to Chicago with the loss of all 17 crewmen. The exact sequence of events that led up to the Rouse's sinking remains a mystery, though it's no surprise that a small wooden schooner fell victim to one of the Great Lakes' infamous storms. Dozens of ships much larger than the Rouse have been defeated by the gales of November. So, what makes the Rouse stand out among the lost giants of the Great Lakes? Most people are drawn to its uniquely tragic story. What the Rouse lacked in size and power, she and her crew made up for in heart and holiday cheer by bringing evergreen trees to the churches and orphanages of Chicago each year. The Rouse's disappearance in 1912 was undoubtedly a blow to the Christmas spirit that year, but her legacy remains strong every holiday season, when a Christmas tree ship from the U.S. Coast Guard docks at Chicago's Navy Pier to unload trees for inner-city families. Today, we look back on the story of the Rouse Simmons, her beloved Captain Santa, and the ongoing tradition of the Christmas tree ship. Launched in Milwaukee in 1868, the Rouse Simmons was named after a prominent Kenosha businessman and member of the Wisconsin State Assembly. Incidentally, Rouse's brother, Zalman Simmons, would go on to become the founder of the Simmons Betting Company. In 1870, the Simmons became part of a lumber shipping fleet owned by Charles Hackley, and for the next 20 years, she would make almost weekly runs from the port of Grand Haven, Michigan to Chicago. Meanwhile, the popular tradition of decorating an evergreen tree for Christmas was growing in popularity in the United States. By the 1890s, around two dozen schooners were hauling loads of trees to sell on the waterfront markets of Chicago, where captains would invite people on board their ship to choose a tree. One of the captains who sold trees here was known among locals for his kindness and generosity, as he would often donate trees to churches and families who couldn't afford one. His name was Herman Schooneman, but local newspapers and children would go on to call him Captain Santa for his warmth and for his desire to spread Christmas cheer. In addition to trees, Schooneman would also sell wreaths, garlands, and other decorations made by his wife Barbara and their three daughters. In November of 1898, tragedy struck the Schooneman family when Herman's brother August was killed while hauling a load of Christmas trees to Chicago. The 75-foot schooner he was on broke up during a storm and sank with the loss of the entire crew. Despite the death of his brother and the dangers of sailing the Great Lakes in November, Herman continued his job as Captain Santa. Fourteen years after his brother's death, almost to the day, Herman Schooneman would meet the same fate. On November 22, 1912, the Simmons left Thompson, Michigan with its cargo of 5,000 evergreen trees and began its voyage to Chicago Harbor. Trees were stacked as high as 8 feet on its deck, a factor that later contributed to the ship's demise, as the uneven weight distribution destabilized the small schooner in rough water. The ship set so low in the water, in fact, that some people even said it looked like a floating forest. As fate would have it, the timing of the schooner's departure couldn't have been worse. As she left port, a storm system was brewing that would go on to sink three other ships that night. Around 3 o'clock the following afternoon on November 23rd, a schooner thought to be the Rouse Simmons was spotted by the Kiwani Life Saving Station with her flag at half-mast, a universal sign for distress. A life-saving boat attempted to reach the ship's position, but blinding snow, wind, and waves prevented them from catching up to the ship as it disappeared into the storm. It's never been confirmed as to whether this ship was actually the Simmons or another ship in distress, which wouldn't have been surprising considering the harsh weather. The arrival of the Simmons was always a highly anticipated event by Chicago residents, but when she didn't show up, Captain Schooneman's family knew the ship had been lost. For months after the sinking, evergreen trees and pieces of wreckage from the Simmons washed ashore in Michigan. In 1924, fishermen discovered Captain Schooneman's oilskin wallet among their catch and returned it back to his widow. For Christmas of 1913, the year after the sinking, the city of Chicago erected a tree on the lakefront in honor of Captain Schooneman and his crew, where more than 100,000 people attended the ceremony. His wife Barbara and three daughters carried on the family business by selling the old schooners to deliver trees and handmade holiday crafts. The sinking of the Simmons, however, marked the beginning of the end for these old Christmas tree ships. Most of these schooners were 40-plus years old and weren't well-maintained, effectively making them a death trap for anyone daring to sail on them. By 1920, the practice of Christmas tree ships stopped altogether. In the year 2000, however, the city of Chicago enlisted the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Mackinac to continue the tradition by delivering more than a thousand Christmas trees for inner-city families and their children every year. 
In 1971, divers finally discovered the wreck of the Rouse Simmons sitting upright in about 165 feet of water near Two Rivers, Wisconsin. Still inside of its cargo hold were the remains of hundreds of evergreen trees. With no survivors or witnesses, the exact cause of the sinking will probably never be known, though it's not difficult to imagine how a small, leaky wooden ship like the Simmons could sink. Perhaps what's more surprising is that it lasted as long as it did. Divers who have explored the wreck say that the mast, anchor chain, and other wreckage are spilled far in front of the ship, indicating that the Simmons probably dove headfirst into a wave and never resurfaced. It's also likely that the massive weight of the Christmas trees shifting toward the bow didn't help matters. While the story of the Rouse Simmons doesn't have a happy ending, the legacy and the spirit of Captain Santa and his crew live on, making it a part of Great Lakes history that continues to capture the hearts and minds of Chicago residents every holiday season.